Well, the first half of the overnight period was very chilly indeed. Temperature of minus 4.5 at Tain, minus 5 at uh, Kinloss Air Force Base. But uh, if you cast your eyes to the southwestern portion of Ireland and the British Isles, we've seen an overnight minimum of 11.3. Um, I believe this is a uh, Shannon, uh, no, Valencia observation and a uh, Shirkin Island on the south coast uh, at 10.8 Celsius. Even cast your eyes over to the southwestern tip of uh, the British Isles and was seen Kildross uh, at 8.6 Celsius. So very mild across the southwestern corner of both Ireland and uh, the UK, chilly up across the north. Now this ur has been uh, working its way northwards over the course of the day and we are now seeing temperatures as warm as 10 celsius at Altnahara, 7 at 10 uh, of course remember it was minus 4.5 this morning 10 celsius at uh, at Kinloss so you know minus 5 versus 10 this afternoon big difference in terms of the feel of the air the reason why we're seeing this is uh, we've got um, an area of uh, low pressure, like I say, up towards Iceland. We've got a warm um, surge of of air between the warm front and the cold front, uh, lifting its way up over the British Isles at this moment in time. Chile across the eastern portion of the country, uh, as you can see here, we're still holding on to chilly air across the um, across through Lincolnshire, Cambridgeshire, into East Anglia, and uh, even the London area where we're seeing colder conditions compared to the northwest corner of the British Isles. As we press through the period, the cold front uh, follows the warm front, and we're back into the polar maritime air once again during the course of tomorrow. But um, high pressure is going to be building quite uh, noticeably across the centre of the country over the next three to five day period. Underneath the area of high pressure itself, we're going to trap uh, fog, and chilly air actually. So temperatures here across the heart of England, Ireland, Wales, it will be colder here than across the, the, the more northwestern corner of the British Isles where we've got that west to southwesterly wind more in the way of cloud cover, for example, as well. So it's going to be a bit of an upside down temperature profile uh, in the coming uh, four or five day period here as that high becomes established over the heart of the UK here. Now, of course, in recent times, I've alluded to the, um, the let me just get the right chart here, the North American pattern in particular. And what we're going to see here is waves of Arctic air coming down into the United States here. Of course, remember, it had been very, very warm during the month of December, but uh, we're seeing big changes now. And that very cold air that has been parked over Western Canada is now starting to bleed southwards and it's going to come in waves uh, into the central and eastern portion of the United States here. The reason why I'm talking about this in a European video is of course that has big implications on our weather. Now the jet stream, uh, let's play through the loop at the moment here first. You can see here these waves of bitterly cold Arctic air driving southwards into the eastern half of North America. And while we've got a jet stream at the moment that is very strong, along with the polar vortex, not doesn't bode well with cold across the, the western portion of Europe. Uh, you know, But the problem is that it's not as simple as just saying we're going to see a, a, you know, a, a, kind of, a, you know, a typical mild Atlantic-driven pattern. Uh, but what we, we are going to start to see is colder getting driven into North America, down through into the United States. That, of course, forces the jet south. And in turn, it then creates the jet stream to, to become buckled, uh, become more wavy, less zonal. And therefore, we start to see the, you know, the undulations of cold and warm uh, lift north and south over the North America Atlantic and European pattern. So all is not lost despite having a strong polar vortex, a strong jet stream. Um, I am um, optimistic, folks, that yes, we aren't going to see, I believe, a long-lived cold spell. But when you start to see this buckling and waviness in the jet, um, you start to open the door 
to the potential for the jet lift in North and the Greenland. As you can see here, this is actually Thursday the 20th of January, and this is just one capture of what can happen when you start to drive Arctic Air in the, uh, into the United States. You force the jet stream northwards, and then, of course, downstream to that, you then force the jet southwards here. And if we look at this particular frame here, let's skip back just a fraction, and you can see exactly what I'm talking about here. So a cool trough into the center of North America, it forces a uh, low pressure development here off the on the east coast of Canada. The jet stream then gets lifted north with warmer. Of course, downstream of that, you're opening the door to cold air coming into the UK pattern here. And that is why I believe that this is not a lost winter in terms of cold weather. So the jet stream is going to become more wavy, more amplified, and we are going to see intrusions of warm, but we're also going to see intrusions of Arctic air here. And uh, I'll I'll show you um what the G the GFS sorry <laughs> what the GFS ensemble is showing here, and it's very very interesting here. The upcoming five day period sees that block of high pressure sending over the British Isles here, so that's not really a big deal. As we start to see these punches of Arctic air driving south into eastern North America, what you're doing essentially is opening up a void over the North Atlantic. And of course that area of high pressure, that block, that stone in the water, so to speak, that the atmosphere likes to run around rather than through, you start to see that area of high pressure retrograde westwards to fill that gap, that void. And as you can see here, as we go from day 1 to 5 to the 6 to 10, look at where the area of high pressure is going. It's going towards the, the, the North Atlantic here. And of course, that opens the gap over the British Isles for cold air to come southwards here. And certainly that is a very interesting picture as we go towards the second half of January here. Now, like I said, we're not necessarily going to see a locked-in cold pattern and one of the reasons for that is because you notice here that the, there is a gap to the north of the high to allow weather systems to come in from the northwest here. So we're not essentially shutting down the Atlantic, but what we're doing is we're forcing weather to come from a colder source region, that being Greenland and Iceland here. And of course, when you get weather coming in from the northwest, you have colder air with areas of low pressure that increases your chances of snowfall as well. So um, while we've got the strong PV, we've got the strong westerlies, the easterly QBO at this minute doesn't appear to have any merit to it or influence. What we're seeing here is the potential for a cold stormy pattern. Now, I believe that even though we're, we're pushing towards the, the, the crucial part of winter, uh, I do also believe that there is a, a room for the potential for a still sudden stratospheric warming here because remember back in 2018 we had an east QBO we had a late sudden stratospheric warming and that of course produced a very very cold end of February beginning of March we had two major arctic outbreaks during the month of March 2018 produced the beast from the east and I think that is still possible as we go forward here so all is not lost. We have a lot of things to still play for in this winter. And if we get these intrusions of Arctic air into the UK pattern during the second half of January, then we perhaps get something developing within the stratosphere in February. You know, when all is said and done, if we get something similar to, say, March 2018, folks will start to look at this winter in a different way to what we're seeing it now. It's just because we haven't seen winter truly hit the uk um so uh, like i say all is not lost here and there is a lot of things still to play for upcoming five day period here looks like this off the gfs ensemble warm across the top across the north of the british isles thanks to winds coming in from the west southwest underneath the core of high pressure notice it's actually below normal across eastern uh, ireland and parts of wales as well as the southern half of england here as we go into the 6 to 10 day period, you start to see the changes taking place here. Area of high pressure shifts westwards 
and of course we see the return of blues, even the 11 to 15, albeit uh, subtle chilliness, uh, it's still uh, at or below normal in terms of temperature here. So, um, yeah, uh, continue to keep watching these videos, folks. Please subscribe to the channel and, of course, um, hit the bell button so you'll be notified when I publish every new video here. So, still all to play for in terms of this winter. Hope you have a great day. I'll be back in the next couple of days with more. Bye for now.